Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. My pleasure. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to Black Bear, completely unique film. Um, how would you kind of describe it to someone who doesn't know much about it? Mm. Uh, that's a tough thing to do. Um, it's um, ostensibly, it's a story about a writer who goes to a bed and breakfast to um, in, in a remote country region on a lake, um, hoping to get some inspiration for her new script. Uh, and she, the couple that runs, she's alone with the couple that runs the B&B and uh, she starts to fall for the man um, in the couple and they start to form this attachment uh, that is disruptive to the marriage. Um, that's what I would say it was on the surface, uh, but a lot more than that happens. I, I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away. Mm. And tell me a bit about the kind of genesis of, you know, the film, where the idea came from and the process of making it. Because I understand kind of almost came to you in like a bit of a fever dream, you know, the, the writing of it. Um, so, you know, what was that process like and, and, and what was the basis of the idea of it? Uh, well, I had been, you know, it had been, at the time I started writing Black Bear, it had been about five years since I had made my last film. And in that time, I had been uh, writing as a screenwriter for hire in Hollywood, and, and that's how I was making my living. So finally, I had enough money saved up to take a break. And uh, when I did, I started to think about what my next project was going to be for myself to direct. Uh, you know, not something that I was getting paid by other people to do for somebody else. Um, and uh, I was really drawn to the things that got me excited about making movies in the first place. Um, my big inspirations were uh, writer directors like John Cassavetes, uh, Rainer Fassbender, Woody Allen, um, you know, James L. Brooks, people who, uh, Bergman, Fellini, people who, um, those were the people who really inspired me initially. And I kind of wanted to get back to my roots and draw on some of those more art and European film uh, traditions to write the movie. Um, I was also exploring a new technique for writing, uh, which was based on a book called From Where We Dream. And um, the author of the book suggests meditation um, and letting scenes come, from you, come, come to you rather than consciously making any sort of conscious decision about what your movie was going to be about. So, um, so I think I was processing uh, my life in film after being in it for 15 years. And I think a lot of scenes started to come to me that were, um, that were sort of derived from those experiences, but not directly autobiographical, just stories set in that milieu scenes and images, characters from the, that milieu. Yeah. And coming to the location, which I think, you know, in, in this film, maybe perhaps more than others, seems really, really integral um, to, to the feeling of the film and, you know, where all the action is set and a, a lot of the kind of things that you do visually with it. Um, why that lake house and, um, you know, how important was it to, for, for the very specific visual style you have throughout the film? Um, yeah, you know, actually the, the, the idea of a lake house was really, really integral to um, the genesis of the project. I, um, that was the one thing I had before I went in and started to do this kind of meditative process. Um, because a friend of mine showed me some pictures of this lake camp that his family had. It was like a, a bunch of bungalows around a lake. And, um, you know, I, we were thinking of working on it together. I was gonna go and do it at his place. He was gonna help produce the movie and everything. Um, and uh, so I was looking at photos of this location and thinking, okay, I've got to do a movie set in this location. So all the scenes that I was thinking of kind of trended toward being set in that environment. And when it came time to shoot the film, um, 
that location was no longer available. By the time we raised the money for the film, that location that my friend had showed me was no longer available. So we had to find something that resembled it um, was really the, the quest to find something that is that was as close to what he had shown me as possible, um, which is a particular place. So, um, so anyway, what we're looking for was three uh, separate structures off a lake and on the lake from which the lake was visible. And on the other side of the lake, we were looking for no development because I wanted it to feel um, remote, cloistered, uh, and natural. I was, and I was thinking of, you know, that self-consciousness that's in the second half, um, you know, seeing all the film crew kind of rammed into that lake house. And I was thinking, you must have had to have your own second, basically duplicate version of that, of the people yeah. actually filming. So that was quite like, that must have been, you know, that's quite a weird moment as a viewer, I think, to kind of have, um, you know, that kind of, um, I don't know if you'd call it meta, but you know, that, that strange moment of realizing that whole thing must have been happening as well behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, and all, all, all the extras were crew members. Uh, so there was that doubling too. And I lived on that set with like the DP and the PAs. And also that seems really crucial to the film is this trio of actors you have at the center um, with Aubrey, Christopher and, and Sarah, in particular Aubrey, who I just think is absolutely phenomenal. I really loved um, Ingrid Goes West. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, you know, why did you land on these three actors and work with them to bring out the real intensity um, of the relationship, which obviously shifts throughout the film between the three of them, but also this uh, this great kind of dark humor that also comes through at different moments. Yeah, well, I um, I talked, so Aubrey and I worked together on a TV show called Easy. We, we acted in it together and um, we, we hit it off and started to talk about doing something together. Um, so I had it in mind to write something, uh, write something for her, and um, that informed that definitely informed the the project. I was interested in, you know, from from knowing her and getting to know her. I, she does have this enigmatic quality and a sort of sarcasm that is like a, a little imposing, actually, and. Um, you know, the, the more I got to know her, the more I, I saw the vulnerability that that was, was shielding her from, that persona was shielding her from. So um, it was in my mind to kind of explore what was under, explore the persona and also what was underneath it in the script. Um, I also wanted Chris and Sarah to be in the movie too. Uh, there, they were, my favorite actors of their generation. Um, and I, I kind of visualized them in the roles, but I didn't know them personally. So I, 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 couldn't, I, I couldn't have that same relationship. Also, they don't have, I mean, Aubrey has one of the most distinct personas in the world. Um, Chris and Sarah are more um, chameleon-like in their approach to their roles. So, um, you know, I didn't have that same, uh, there wasn't that same complexity, A, because I didn't know them, uh, or just actually just because I didn't know them. But uh, I definitely wanted them to be in the movie. And, you know, um, we've only got a couple of minutes left, but finally, I just wanted to ask, you know, what do you think the film has to say, perhaps, or, or what kind of um, themes do you think are being played out through this playfulness, really, of, uh, you know, uh, what's real, um, what's fictional. Some of it feels very realistic, you know, the kind of um, back and forth between the couple, I think at times, you know, feels almost like a real argument, but then there's this surreal quality as well. So what do you think the film um, wants to say about the creative process and, you know, upturning perhaps the relationship between the viewer and the film um, and constantly challenging our expectations, I guess. Um, I think, I was definitely interested in making a statement about creativity with the film. Um, I think that 
human beings have this incredible ability to take in negativity, um, experience it as pain and process it. And then almost like an alchemy, uh, transmit it into something or yeah, release something positive from themselves. Uh, so, so basically human beings can process negativity and turn it into, um, beauty. And one of the processes we see that clearest in is, is art. Um, for example, I think the most obvious example is stand-up comedy where the stand-up comedian takes pain, hypocrisy, and tragedy and transform it into something that brings an audience joy. Um, I think, uh, I think that's what the author of the film within the film is, is trying to do. Uh, so I do think it's a movie about turning um, negativity into positivity through the creative act. Um, it's also about betrayal and, um, and um, explores the fact that most of the time in life, we're not simply victims. Um, we're also persecutors. And um, sometimes our very victimization turns us into persecutors. So. Um, in this film, I wanted to tell a story about a protagonist who is the betrayer in one situation and the betrayed in another, and ask the audience to kind of think about the relationship between um, those two modes for this character. Um, is one happening because the other did? Uh, if so, which part uh, happened first? questions like that. Um, I just wanted to invite the audience to understand this more. Um, so what I'm looking for this more ambiguous understanding of guilt and innocence. And finally, you know, how does it feel to be putting a film out in just this moment? Obviously, we're coming to the back end, hopefully, uh, of the pandemic and hopefully be back in movie theaters soon. But obviously, right now, a lot of people are going to be watching from from home. So, you know, what does it feel like to you to be putting a film out right now? I really, I actually really enjoyed putting out the film this way. I, I, all my previous films I've done like extensive festival tours with um, and been kind of forced to confront audiences over and over again. And um, obviously people have different reactions. Some people like your film, some people don't. But, um, you know, people tend to remember the negative. It's, it's just part of our DNA. And uh, I actually find those experiences kind of harrowing to have to just confront the audience. And they also are, um, they encourage a certain self-involvement, I think, you know, uh, because you're, you're, you're just dealing with a lot of um, attention and good and bad, and it tends to make you think about the way you're being perceived. This way, the movie just quietly came out. Um, I don't think any more or less people saw it because of the pandemic. Uh, I think probably the same amount of people would have seen it either way. And I'm not so, um, I'm, I'm able to move on and work on my new projects and not really think about this thing that I wrote three years ago, you know? Mm -hmm. So I kind of enjoyed it. All right, fantastic. Well, I think I'm out of time. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us and for this brilliant, and, you know, really um, unexpected film. I, yeah, and I found it um, really unique and original. So thank you so much. Thanks, Sarah. I appreciate it.